We welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Caitlin Clark, the all-time leading scorer in Division I history, about to play her final collegiate game. So, too, is Camila Cardoso, an All-American ticketed for the WNBA lottery. Lisa Bluter, 24 seasons at Iowa in her second straight title game. And Dawn Staley, trying to become just the fifth coach to win three national championships. The stage is set, and we are ready to go. It all comes down to this. Will it be undefeated South Carolina or Iowa for the very first time as we welcome you courtside? Hey, everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. We are so happy to be with you this Sunday afternoon on ABC. The excitement around this game, partner, is just incredible. Ryan, you could not have scripted a better ending to this magical women's college season. You have an undefeated South Carolina team looking for redemption and an Iowa team led by a star and unlike any we have ever seen. And that star, of course, is Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is the best offensive player the women's college game has seen in 30 years. It's a combination of what she can do. Led the nation at just under 32 points a game, steps back and hits the logo threes. An incredible passer. Also led the nation in assists at nine per game and she has become part of a women's basketball movement you see the points and assists for clark leading the nation in both of those categories meanwhile for south carolina they have so many key contributing players their posts, though, dominant with Camila Cardoso and Ashlyn Watkins. Incredible inside game for South Carolina, and it starts with the starting center, and that's 6-7 Camila Cardoso. She demands the ball inside, plays with great efficiency, coming off a game where she dominated 22 points, 11 boards, and then coming in off the bench, perhaps the best athlete on either team. Ashlyn Watkins, 20 rebounds in that semifinal win over NC State. Huge performances from both Cardoso and Watkins to get South Carolina to this point today as we send things over to another Hall of Famer, Holly Rowe. When Tahina Pow Pow decided to transfer, she was looking for a place where she would be surrounded by other players who wanted to be as great as she did. She found a forever home with the Gamecocks. She said from day one, it has felt like family. And Don Staley has built a roster of loaded superstars who are also very unselfish. Look at what's happened during the NCAA tournament. In five games running up to tonight, four different leading scores in those games. Players say, we have one goal. We don't care who does it or how we get there. This unselfish attitude has them chasing perfection tonight. The we over me is working for the Gamecocks. See if they have some fun tonight doing just that. Well, they are one win away from an undefeated season. We're ready to set the stage further, and we'll send things over now to public address announcer, Jamie Coffey. At this time, we ask those willing and able to please rise to honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad. Today, the flag displayed along the court is held by the women of NASA, scientists, engineers, and leaders from here in Cleveland and across the country. And presenting the colors are the NCOs from the Cleveland Recruiting Battalion, U.S. Army. And now, please join recording artist Michelle Brooks Thompson in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, all oh, the red pots we watch were so gallantly streaming. Oh, the lady 
a brilliant national anthem as we get ready for the start of action between Iowa and South Carolina. South Carolina, the 11th undefeated team to reach the championship. Nine of the previous 10 have gone on to win. This is the ninth title game between the AP top two teams. And of course, Rebecca, this is also a rematch from last year's semifinals. South Carolina went into that game undefeated as well. And then Iowa, of course, ended that en route to advancing to the national championship. Many of the South Carolina players talked to us about how that has fueled them coming into this game. But it's a very different style of play for South Carolina that have the shooters this year that they didn't have last year that would have helped them advance. So much attention around this game. For a second straight year, Iowa has grabbed the attention of the nation, and they're ready to go tonight. I won't back down. No, I'm coming for the crown. Yeah, I won't back down. Jamie Coffey for the Iowa starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. And now the starters for the Hawkeyes. At Ford, a 6-2 sophomore from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Number 45, Hannah. Junior out of Chicago, Illinois. Number three, Sydney of Falter. At guard, a six foot grad student from Edwardsville, Illinois. Number 20, Kate Martin. At guard, a five non fifth year out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Number 24. And at guard, a six-foot senior from West Des Moines, Iowa, number 22, Caitlin Clark. We're ready to go. How about South Carolina on the precipice of perfection, looking for championship number three? Never gonna stop for nobody, never try to block, no, never, hey. not on a different level, going to the top, yeah, huh, never gonna stop for nobody, never try to block, no, to the top, yeah. Now time for the South Carolina starting lineup. It's brought to you by Capital One. And now the starters for the Gamecocks. At four to six, two sophomore out of Oviedo, Florida. Number 21, Chloe Kiss. Center, a 6'7 senior from Montes Carlos, Brazil. Number 10, Camila Cardozo. At center, a 5'9 sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. Number 25, Raven Johnson. At guard, a 6'0 junior from Dayton, Ohio. Number 23, Bree Hall. And a 
Gone to find nine senior out of Oceanside, California. Zero Tahina. Pow, pow. And introducing the head coaches for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Lisa Bluter. And for the South Carolina Gamecocks, Don Staley. <laughs> Iowa and South Carolina getting ready to go. A handshake exchange between Lisa Bluter and Dawn Staley. Dawn Staley has talked about how her team has not been showing tightness at all, any nerves, any pressure about completing perfection, but she said, I feel it, and our coaching staff shoulders it. Meanwhile, Lisa Bluter, as she said last year and has said again this year, win or lose today, this season has been such a massive success. She never could have dreamed of this moment for women's basketball growing up in Iowa, playing their famous six on six, and is just so grateful to have her team here in this moment. You heard her tell Holly earlier, if it was a five game series, she's not sure she feels so good about the chances in taking three of those five. But in one game, anything can happen, and Iowa looking to end perfection for a second straight year against South Carolina. Caitlin Clark, Kate Martin, Gabby Marshall will all play their final collegiate game today. Camilla Cardoso will play her final college game as well. South Carolina has not lost since falling to Iowa in the semifinals a year ago, seeking redemption and a title today. Stolke and Cardoso to jump it up. And the 6-7 Cardoso whacks it over to Kitts. South Carolina controls, and the national championship is underway. Iowa starting in man-to-man, -man, and you saw on the jump circle the incredible size advantage Cardoso has. Here's Kitts twisting, can't finish, and Martin the rebound for Iowa. Here is Clark flicking it ahead. Stolke turns. Good movement here. Martin's three is good. A strong start for the Hawkeyes. Lisa Bluter told us it will be important for Kate Martin to hit some threes from the perimeter, giving up some size as well in her matchup. Here's Raven Johnson. No, good box out there. And Clark comes down with the rebound for Iowa. Here is Clark weaving through traffic, bouncing. Stolke can't finish it as Cardoso there to contest. You see the fast pace. Both of these teams like to get up and down and play quickly. Many differences for South Carolina from a year ago as Pow Pow can't hit and Marshall the rebound. One of them, though, just how much faster they play than they did last season. Here's a falter. Sydney Falter has slid into the starting lineup for the injured Molly Davis, done a wonderful job. There's Kate Martin driving it, will take and pop it in. It was those mid-range jumpers from Kate Martin that really carried Iowa to the finish line against UConn. And because of all the defensive attention Caitlin Clark gets, her teammates know that some drives will be there for them, whether they end up in layups or mid-range jumpers. Bardoso can't flip it in, trying to get to it. Loose ball, Iowa has it. Three on two developing. A falter looking to take it inside and does. What a start for the Hawkeyes. Incredibly important for Iowa's confidence. They have scored seven, none of them, by Caitlin Clark. They've also gotten four straight stops against South Carolina to begin this game. They dump it into Cardoso. Triple team comes. Cardoso can't finish. Here comes Iowa. Clark has it. Clark thinking about taking instead into the lane. Can't flip it in. And it's knocked out of bounds by South Carolina. Stays here. Iowa can thrive in transition. Caitlin Clark's head always up. Outstanding with the get ahead, the passing. 
four players touch it before getting the wide open look. Here's a falter, we're gonna drive it again. Needs help this time. Flings it out, Clark open three, is good! A 10 nothing right hook from Iowa to begin the national championship game. Cardoso finally gets South Carolina on the board. I will continue to look at Cardoso. Here's Clark, the crossover. She gets fouled. She gets fouled shooting from three and will take three free throws here as Bree Hall picks up the personal. An incredible start for Iowa. Everyone getting involved, doing it in different ways, transition. Mid-range attacks, you see the push-off there by Clark. Cardoso contests, but we've seen Caitlin Clark time and again hitting shots with players in her face. And Clark, fortunate she did not get called for a foul there on that push-off. You could see the South Carolina bench rising up, asking for it. That's a really cool help. First player to ever lead Division I in points per game and make it to the national championship game. Well, that's because they haven't also led Division I in assists per game. <laughs> <laughs> the national player of the year for a second straight season hits all three free throws. Look to Cardoso. She's been getting triple teams. She's a good passer, can find easier looks from her perimeter player. Pow Pow's three is good. Tahina Pow Pow, top three in the nation in three point shooting percentage. Here's Clark, wheeling, taking, and banking it home. So after her teammates had the first seven, Clark has the last eight for Iowa. Deep drop coverage. The middle mid-range pull-ups are going to be there for South Carolina guards. They dump it in. Cardoso underneath lays it home. She was an unstoppable force last season against Iowa, but was coming off the bench. Clark, oh my, from the future. Clark has scored the last 11 Iowa points. Pow, pow, no, Cardoso, uh-uh. Kids gets it up and in. South Carolina relentless on the offensive glass. It's going to be so important, especially the way Iowa is shooting for South Carolina to get a lot more field goal attempts. Clark looking to shake Kitts. Clark. Knocked away by Kitts, did a nice job there. Here's Clark, will take another bomb and gets fouled. Kitts fouls Clark, and she is going right back to the line. You've seen South Carolina switch at times defensively. Well, bigs, even if they're used to playing on the perimeter, they're not used to playing 25 feet away, trying to contest a guard. One of the things Caitlin Clark talked to us about was the way West Virginia and UConn defended her. Said it was the best defense she had seen in her collegiate career. Felt grateful that she saw it from West Virginia earlier in the tournament because it prepared her and her team to be able to deal with it against UConn. They also felt it would prepare them for anything they would see defensively today against South Carolina. And those two teams were able to limit Iowa in transition, set their defenses a little easier. Clark misses the third free throw. She has the last 13 Iowa points. A 20 to nine Hawkeye lead. Hits, mid-range jumper, won't go. Clark the rebound. Clark eyes up always. Clark looking to take Raven Johnson. Clark bounces the cut from Martin, who misses the layup, and a foul on Addison O'Grady is gonna keep things with South Carolina. Make no mistake, she missed that layup because there was six, seven long arms between her and the basket. Ashlyn Watkins, Tessa Johnson will come in for South Carolina. Sanaya Fagan will as well. And here's one of the advantages the Gamecocks have. They have a nine player rotation. Dawn Staley trusts each of them implicitly with any moment. And she has had the exact right touch all season long for when to pull what string. Puppet master? I think so. Don Staley in South Carolina in its fourth straight Final Four. 
Watkins storms in, kicks out, jumps in, will fire. Can't hit, long rebound. Watkins, who had 20 boards off the bench in the semifinal. And a foul will keep it here. 4.45 to go in the first. And if you're Iowa, you couldn't have asked for a better one. Caitlin Clark firing away from deep. Yes, you have to guard her even at 33 feet. And Carver Hawkeye enjoying what they're seeing in Iowa City. And the fuel has been Caitlin Clark. She has scored Iowa's last 13 points. We've seen her hit from deep, get inside, and how deep? 30 feet on this box. Well, a total Clark eclipse when it comes to the record books. She's now third in career NCAA tournament points. She's first in assists. She's first in threes made. And yes, you see that sun is now behind her orbit. Caitlin Clark just truly rewriting the record book this season. And on the brink of a little more history, she is just behind Maya Moore and Shamiqua Holdsclaw for the most points ever scored in the NCAA tournament in a career. It's just incredible. As the moments get bigger, she continues to rise to them. For Wiley and off the bench for South Carolina as well. I, she is a game changer. Iowa in a zone out of that under out, out of bounds for South Carolina. For Wiley, nice dish, and Fagan lays it in. Point of emphasis for South Carolina at their shoot around this morning. Attack the gaps in the zone. You saw that from Full Wiley. That foul just before the break was called on a falter. That was her first. Here's Clark guarded by Johnson. Clark dips in, can't finish, wanted a whistle, did not get it. Here is Johnson off the stop. Tessa Johnson will fling it out to Watkins. Raven Johnson, who's done such a wonderful job running the point this season. For Wiley spins, can't finish. Rebound Fagan. Fagan nearly loses it, shovels it. For Wiley banks it in. More second chance points for South Carolina. Iowa shooting 60%. South Carolina shooting half of that. They need more attempts. Martin in the mid-range gets fouled by Watkins. And free throws here for Kate Martin. Hey, the Burden to Rossi show presented by AT&T back for its third consecutive year. Currently airing on ESPN. Today's guest list includes Robin Roberts, Snoop Dogg, Neka Gumake, Jalen Hurts, and our buddy Jason Sudeikis is back as well. It's also just a great group to have coffee with. I, or other things. <laughs> Fair enough. There is Jason, who has been a part of the Iowa contingent throughout the latter stages of this tournament. As Martin hits both free throws, Cardoso will check back in for the game cop. What I've liked from the officiating so far is they've let there be contact when it's not on a shot. They're letting them be a little bit physical inside on the perimeter as well, but always protecting the shooter. Brenda Pantoa, Joe Vasili, and Jellica Suffern, our officials today for Wiley. Dips inside of Marshall and finishes. It's gonna be really hard for the printer players of Iowa to keep her in front of them. Martin attacks the closeout. Stolke. Stolke, nowhere to go. Finds Marshall. Right back to Stolke. Clark trying to shake free. Raven Johnson doing an outstanding job on her. Instead, it's Martin off on a three. And Raven Johnson, the rebound for South Carolina. Nice defensive set there from the Gamecocks. They lob it inside Cardoso. Feels like South Carolina has been able to settle things down now after a torrid start from Iowa. It was 10-0 out of the gates in favor of the Hawkeyes. Johnson can't hit, and a foul here on Stolke as she picks up her first. Attacking the gaps in the zone, and Malaysia Full Wiley has such great quickness. We've seen it time and again. She got hit on the head there, too. How she cups the ball like a running back to protect it as she gets into the paint. You already have six offensive rebounds from South Carolina. In the semifinal last year, which Iowa won, South Carolina was a plus 21 on the offensive glass. Cardoso gets blocked. Last hits her. Iowa ball. Hannah Stolke, 6'2", Cardoso, 6'7", tries to get around. It's a piece of the ball. Yes, Cardoso last to hit it. 
Anna Stolke said her confidence was sky high after the performance she had in the semifinal against UConn. Here's Clark driving it inside, bounces it, and throws it away. Stolke cut towards her, and Clark threw it where she was. First turnover from Iowa. And first turnover of the game. For Wiley, a three is good. The freshman is unfazed by the stage. A 9-2 South Carolina run. Here's Fearbach in off the bench for Iowa. And for Wiley comes up with a steal, then Fearbach takes it back, and Iowa retains possession. Griffin Johnson done a good job on this possession, keeping the ball out of Caitlin Clark's hands. Marshall fakes the three, will drive it. Fearbach will do the same. Fearbach dives inside and gets swallowed up by Cardoso. The get ahead to Johnson. Tessa Johnson loses it out of bounds, and it will stay here with South Carolina as Caitlin Clark tells her team to calm down. Malaysia Full Wiley has shown what she can do. We've seen the dribble penetration inside there, stepping confidently into the three. A difference maker all season long off the bench for South Carolina. First time we saw Dawn Staley in Paris, very start of the season, she said, Malaysia Full Wiley is a generational player. And we have seen why throughout this year, flashes of never before seen finishes in the college game. And for her to come in in this moment and be ready right away, remarkable. Well, Wiley will get a breather, so will Raven Johnson after she did such a nice job face guarding Clark over the last few possessions. Tessa Johnson, another freshman, floats it in, and it's a two point game. Lee Hall now with the defensive assignment again on Clark. Look at her hand right in Clark's face. Clark looking to separate from Hall. Clark, the drive, able to bank it in. And now Marshall nearly comes up with a steal and does. Marshall steals it. A falter looking for help. O'Grady. Clark trying to get open. She is. Will fire. Didn't have the angle and missed it left. Seventh time this season that Gabby Marshall has gotten one of those steals in the backcourt. 24-20, Iowa in front of South Carolina. First quarter winding to a close. Here's Hall, looking to attack, lost it. Clark on the steal. Here's Clark, trying to wheel through traffic. Clark, the drive, the kick, and a foul here is gonna go against Hall. And that will be the second personal on Bree Hall in this first quarter, a significant foul. She has good size and length, and this is what she is doing on Caitlin Clark, trying to affect her vision. One of the best passers the game has ever seen. Her hand right in Caitlin Clark's face. And Raven Johnson back into the game now as Hall goes to the bench after the second foul. You have about a six second difference game in shot clock. Here's Clark. Will Iowa wind it down? No, that's why! A stunning opening quarter from Clark. She has 18, the most ever in a championship game quarter. Johnson can't answer. O'Grady the board, and that will do it for the first. Iowa a seven point lead after one. Holly chats with Lisa Bluter when we get back. How about Caitlin Clark, her final college game? You think she's ready for the moment? 18 in the first. Start of the second quarter of the national championship game. Iowa a seven point lead in moments ago. Holly Rowe caught up with Lisa Bluter. Well, Coach Bluter, the shot clock's winding down. Uh, Caitlin pulls up for a shot, and I see your body language. You're like, oh. no. And then it goes in. How do you navigate this? You know, when she feels it, she feels it. Obviously, we're trying to think a little bit more clock management. But hey, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna take the three. You're.
team had a big focus on Camila Cardozo. How do you feel like the post play has gone so far? It's done a pretty good job, I think. I, I feel like still we need to box out a little bit better. They're so hard to box out, but we got to really focus on that. And then just quickly, Malaysia Phil Wiley came in and has changed the game. How do you contest her a little better? Man, she's fast. She's fast with the basketball. She's fast going downhill. I think we got to keep the ball in her hands in order to stop her, because when she gets the ball, it's pretty hard to contain her. Thank you so much. Thanks, Holly. Caitlin Clark is a singular offensive force like we have never seen, and South Carolina knows that. So they're going to send multiple defenders to her, try to keep the ball out of her hands. Raven Johnson first, Bree Hall here, and then sometimes it's going to be a switch. And that means the 6-7 big Cardoso will also be out on the perimeter. But much like earlier times this season, there is not a single answer for slowing down Caitlin Clark. And with those 18 first quarter points, she has passed Shamiqua Holtzclaw for the most points in NCAA tournament career history. Start of the second quarter, and Iowa a seven point lead with the basketball. Clark with 18 in the first, guarded by Johnson Hall on the bench with two fouls. Clark, the little runner, won't go. Almost flipped it up casually. Seen her take a few more non-paint twos to start this game, a shot she's usually reluctant to pull on. Here's Fagan, baited into that. Can't hit, Clark the rebound. And then poked away by Cardoso. Raven Johnson after it, and the possession arrow belongs with South Carolina. Nice heads-up defensive play there by Camila Cardoso, just poking at it. Those 15-foot shots by the bigs for South Carolina are going to be there. Some of the mid-range pull-ups off the bounce for South Carolina guards are going to be there because Iowa's defense is predicating on hoping that they can force South Carolina into those attempts. South Carolina 73-1 and one over the last two seasons. Just remarkable. Their only loss last year in the semifinals to Iowa. Here's Johnson. Johnson's mid-range is good. Tessa Johnson, a fearless freshman, delivering off the bench for South Carolina. And she has been the best South Carolina guard in terms of consistently hitting those mid-range in the tournament. Here's Clark bouncing. Martin cutting. Tried to force it into traffic. Could not. And now South Carolina with numbers. Johnson bodies in and finishes a strong start to the second for the Gamecocks. How about the freshman off the bench for South Carolina? Both Johnson and Full Wiley. Tessa Johnson comes out to meet Clark. Clark evades, bounces. Oh, Grady gets denied by Cardoso. Now South Carolina will slow things down. Cardoso working O'Grady, Cardoso, and the foul, banks it in, and a chance to tie at the line. Looked like Cardoso had maybe shuffled the feet. That's what the Iowa bench wanted, but instead, Cardoso can tie it. Don Staley has called Camilla Cardoso the separator because of how she can change things both on the defensive and offensive ends. Block shot one way, foul called for the and one on the other. The CO Grady getting the wrist of Cardoso. Six points, six rebounds, two blocks, and a tie game. A 7-0 run to start the second for South Carolina. See Raven Johnson picking Caitlin Clark up full court. And she has done the best job thus far on Clark. Here's Clark. Clark into the paint, gets blocked, a falter open, knocks down the three. Sydney a falter, Lisa Bluter calls Chicago tough. Cardoso gets fouled on the reach, and it's going to be Kate Martin. That will be her first personal. Caitlin Clark has been looking to get inside and penetrate in here. Nice block by Johnson. Well, we've seen this a lot. Caitlin Clark, when a teammate is open, finding them for an open look. The NCAA Men's Basketball National Championship game between Purdue and UConn Monday with coverage beginning at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on TBS. For more information, go to NCAA.com.
Cardoso misses both, but Fagan there for the finish. As Iowa having all kinds of trouble securing the defensive glass. And they knew that was going to happen coming into this game against the size of South Carolina. That'll be a foul on Full Wiley. And that will be her first. Puts a lot of pressure on you to make shots, though, Ryan, when the other team, because of offensive boards, is getting so many extra opportunities. Well, they already have nine more field goal attempts in this game. And they talked about managing that emotionally as well, knowing that they were going to give up those offensive boards and not to let it debilitate them mentally. Clark. Marshall looked like she got pushed. No call. Martin fakes the pass. Now dishes. A falter. Will drive it. Good look. And Stolke lays it in. Sydney, a falter, has been completely under control in these crucial moments of the tournament. Johnson. For Wiley in the corner. Unable to hit. Rebound for Wiley, who follows it up, can't finish. Cardoso can. Another offensive rebound from South Carolina. And it started with Full Wiley, the guard attacking the offensive glass. Now, this is an Iowa team, had 19 fewer field goal attempts against LSU in their regional final. Marshall thought about the deep three. Here's Clark curling, faking, asking for the screen. Goes away from it, and a foul on Raven Johnson, and that will be her first. You're allowed the hot stove touch on the ball handler facing the basket, and Raven Johnson left her hand on Caitlin Clark. It looks like minimal contact, Ryan, but by the rules, it's a foul. Hot stove touch, you cannot continue to touch. Here is Clark. Clark finds Stolke, who lays it in. One of the and one didn't get it. Dawn Staley also got a warning there from Joe Vasili. She was very upset with that call on Raven Johnson. Here is Cardoso. She has been unstoppable. Johnson in the corner, can't hit. Clark the rebound. Iowa running. A falter. Unable to finish. Tessa Johnson, a good contest. Here is Full Wiley, the hesitation, the attack, and the block. Sudeikis applauding the defense. I like the attack by Mylasia Full Wiley. She often has success doing it this time. Hannah Stolke come comes over, perfectly timed block. Fagan checks out, Watkins in for South Carolina. Here's Cardoso. Johnson's three is good. Tessa Johnson, no hesitation. So impressed by this young woman's moxie. Johnson in for Wiley, just terrific off the bench. Clark thought about it. Hawked by Johnson. Clark backs it away. Looking to take Johnson and a foul on Tessa Johnson. That will be her first and the third foul on South Carolina this quarter. The confidence with which Tessa Johnson is playing on the offensive end of the floor here. A little bit of space, arms not quite outreached by Gabby Marshall and steps into it. Clark, too long on that attempt and South Carolina can take the lead. Here's for Wiley, blurring inside for the bucket. No, a travel and South Carolina turns it over. This is where South Carolina defenders need to understand if the ball, when I'm defending a ball handler, I have to be completely hands off because the officials have set the tone of what they're calling. Right. Here's Martin, left alone, can't hit. Rebound batted out of bounds by Stolke. It will be South Carolina basketball. How about for Iowa, Rebecca, anything they can do differently on the defensive glass against South Carolina? Their bigs need to continue to box out. It's gonna have to be a full team effort. All of the guards are gonna have to go to the glass as well. South Carolina plus 10 on the glass. Watkins dumping it inside. Cardoso has given the Gamecocks their first lead of the afternoon. And getting the scores offensively has allowed South Carolina to set easier defensively. 
Here's a falter on the cut, and for Wiley, the rejection. Here's for Wiley behind the back, can't reverse it in. Rebound knocked away to Marshall. Here's Clark with Iowa down two. Clark looking to take Watkins. Clark, shimmy, swivels, can't finish. Another chance here for Iowa. Iowa got out to a 10-0 lead in the first. South Carolina has responded. A falter bounces. Stolke able to finish. Plus the foul. It'll be number two on Watkins. And a chance for three for Hannah Stolke. How about the back and forth action here in this national championship game? We could not have asked for more. These two teams have come to play. How impressive have the freshmen for South Carolina been performing on this huge stage? Malaysia Full Wiley on the offensive end in particular. Tessa Johnson as well. They have come out fearlessly looking for their offense, playing with confidence. This is a really big moment for any player, but especially a player in her first collegiate season. And it's one of the things that Dawn Staley has really prepared her bench and her freshmen to handle throughout this season because she has thrown them into the fire. She has not been afraid to pull any lever at any moment with her nine-player rotation. And you can see the bench delivering so far today 20 points off it already in this first half. And a luxury for Dawn, but also for those players. Yes, everyone loves to start, but in this big moment to get a few minutes under your belt, watching your teammates do their thing, and then just come in and do what you do. And I thought it was really interesting as Stolke completes the three-point play. Bree Hall told us that's part of the way Dawn Staley recruits. She says, if you want to win a player of the year award, if you want to average 25 points a game, this is not the school for you. If you want a chance to win a national championship, then you should come to South Carolina. In the corner for Wiley's three. Off the mark, hits the offensive rebound. Yet another for the Gamecocks. And a foul on a falter will put Chloe Kitts at the line. That is a critical foul because it's number two on Sydney a falter. That time, Iowa in a 2-3 zone. And I was gonna say it's harder to box out in his own, but I always had a hard time corralling the defensive board no matter what defense they're in. They're just giving up so much size inside. So you have two on a falter, two on Watkins, two on Hall. As Kitt sinks the free throw. Hey, the WNBA draft, Monday, April 15th on ESPN. Coverage begins with WNBA countdown at 7 Eastern. Then at 7.30, it's the 2024 WNBA Draft live on ESPN and the ESPN app. Caitlin Clark expected to be the first pick as Cardoso gets called for the over the back, and it's significant because Iowa is in the bonus. First foul on Cardoso. Dawn Staley in disagreement. She got a number of offensive boards or touch the ball using her length and size to reach over that time deemed too much contact down below Stolke has the last seven Iowa points you know that draft Caitlin Clark expected to be the first pick to the Indiana Fever Camilla Cardoso could go as early as two certainly you don't feel like she's going to slip past four in the draft here's the WNBA mock so that is Monday April 15th on ESPN, Angel Reese will be in that draft as well. You see Rakia Jackson, Cameron Brink, Aaliyah Edwards, others ticketed for the top five. Cardoso can't finish. Rebound, Scurry, and Martin comes up with it for Iowa. A rare one-shot trip for South Carolina. Can Iowa take advantage? Clark yet to score this quarter after 18 in the first. Finds Martin. Martin sandwiched between two, able to flip it in. Her in-between game has really shown up at key times in this Final Four. Four-point Iowa lead. Deflected, hits, throws it away, and Fearbach is fouled by Tessa Johnson. And now Fearbach will go to the line. And that is number two on Tessa Johnson. So South Carolina in some foul trouble here with Johnson, Watkins, and all and Hall all with two free two personals. Last two possessions, Iowa's been in a tandem 2-3, and they've been able to get stops out of it both times. Lisa Bluter, a coach who will 
change up her, her defenses regularly and a team that's very experienced with it. No shots here for Iowa. Here's Clark. Iowa didn't have possession yet as Stolke drives inside but can't finish it. Attacked right away with Cardoso on the bench. First time that there was a good looking lane because Cardoso not in. Here is Kitts dumping it down for Fagan. Pow Pow run off the line for Wiley into the corner. Johnson short on a three. Long rebound, Fearbach. Clark with space. Clark bounces, Stolke gets denied by Fagan, who's able to keep it in bounds. Nice stop defensively by Sanaya Fagan. Full Wiley whips it out, pow, pow. Yes, yes! One point Iowa lead. Clark yet to score in the second. We'll put up a three here, and hit. You know she loves going left. Raven Johnson forcing her right, forcing her right, and then she went left because she is that good. But Wiley dumps it in, Kitts dumps it down. Fagan has it stripped, persistent. Big minutes off the bench for Sanaya Fagan. Here's Clark, had it knocked away, taken by Johnson. Johnson on the steal, shovels to Kitts, who lays it in. 44 all, oh, what a first half here in this national championship game. South Carolina, deadly when they can get out in transition, especially off of turnovers. Fifth tie of the half. Here's Clark. Clark looking to take Johnson. Clark into the paint, waits, gets denied, goes back up, and a held ball. Iowa has the possession arrow. Raven Johnson forcing her right, does a good job on that dribble penetration. Here, the screen comes, forcing right, forcing right. Yeah, the screen's there, goes left, steps back, just creates the space she needs. We will step aside. South Carolina takes a timeout. Tied at 44, under a minute to go in the first half of the national championship game. The space she creates. Haley Clark and Iowa going up against the South Carolina machine. A deep one. You back! Caitlin Clark! And a foul called on Boston. Where would South Carolina be without Zion Cook? Now you see her, now you don't. And the mythical mastery of Caitlin Clark continues. Iowa has conquered South Carolina. Well, Iowa trying to do it again. South Carolina trying to get some revenge. Coming up, Dove Halftime Report. What a high energy first half. Aaliyah Boston joins our outstanding set. Was part of the high Aaliyah. Part of that South Carolina team a season ago, the rookie of the year in the WNBA this past season and future teammate of Caitlin Clark. I hope our viewers at home were smart enough to wear a quarter zip with a pouch for their snacks because you do not want to spend half time doing anything other than watching our studio show. They have been incredible. L, Drea, Cheney, Coach Peck, Aaliyah. Well, Papa Clark, I'm sure he's got some snacks in there. Clark will inbound, under a minute to go, into Stolke, right back to Clark. Stolke bounces underneath, Martin able to finish, nice play out of the inbound and the timeout. Caitlin Clark read it beautifully, she saw that two players came to her, where's the next pass, Stolke, and then the one more. How about Kate Martin, 11 points in this first half, her final collegiate game. The player that... Lisa Bluter calls the glue of this team. Full Wiley hopping through, setting up Fagan, unable to finish, but another offensive rebound. Kitts squeezes it out to Full Wiley. Pow Pow's three again. Tahina Pow Pow has been massive from three's first half. She is three for three from downtown. 
Shot clock turns off, and Johnson picks the pocket of court. Raven Johnson lays it in. What a momentum buster to end the half. Clark, does she get it off? No, and that's how the first half ends. Instead of Iowa holding for one, Raven Johnson comes up with a steal and the score, and South Carolina takes its largest lead of the game into the half. Two massive steals from Raven Johnson towards the end of that half. Sonia Fagan is now with Holly Rowe. Well, Sonia, the story of this ball game has been offensive rebounding. Whether it's you, Camilla, how has this team really owned the glass? Um, we're just trying to just clean up every board that they uh, that they take, that our shots take, because our shots not falling right now. But we're trying to clean up every board that, that's not going in. You're such a great leader for this team. You actually asked where you could move your seat on the bench so you could help lead the freshmen. What have you thought about them coming in and being so in control? I just love the fact that they're taking advantage of every opportunity they're giving. They're, they're attacking, they're scoring, and they're doing exactly what they need to do. Thank you, Sanaya. Thank you. Well, South Carolina takes a three-point lead into the half. After the break, Ellen Company will be back for the Dub Halftime Report. That's coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. A 14-point swing as it is the Gamecocks that now have the lead. We welcome you in here from courtside. Woo! L. Duncan alongside Andrea Carter, Chenea Gumake, Carolyn Peck, and our resident Gamecock, Aaliyah Boston. <laughs> How you holding up, sis? Doing a lot better than I was started. <laughs> you just felt the energy. I mean, Iowa came out. They were hot, attacking the paint, knocking down the three. Then you felt South Carolina, they kind of settled in, and they just played their game. They slowed down a little bit. You have Raven. I think she's doing a fantastic job on Caitlin, especially the second quarter. But Pow Pow cannot go unnoticed. Three for three from behind the arc. I mean, she is just shooting at keeping them in the in the game. I think the most important thing to notice the difference between the first quarter and second quarter. It was the Iowa's pace and Caitlin Clark. She had a record to break, and she said, "Let me go ahead and check that off and get that out of the way." And. Okay, look at how she is able to get open. More times than not, the officials aren't watching until after she gets the ball, but she does her work early. And there were a lot of different people that had to guard her. But Raven Johnson locked her down in the second in, that, in the second quarter. Yep, South Carolina is coached by Dawn Staley, and the D stands for defense. They're the number one defensive team in the nation, and they have the SEC Defensive Player of the Year and Camilla Cardoso. You saw her get the block, but then they had to go up against Iowa zone. What do they do? How do they respond? On. She got the ball, was patient, reposted again, and my favorite words in basketball, and one, son, and 11 one. And one. <laughs> seven rebounds. Really quick, you talked about Raven uh, and Caitlin Clark making history, but when she's being guarded by Raven, she's just one for five. She's doing an incredible job keeping up with the most prolific score we've ever seen. But, Drea, when you think about the first half, what's the most glaring thing to you? Kate Martin's been a bucket. Iowa's <laughs> defense has been stifling at times, and the most glaring thing to me in this game is South Carolina as freshmen mm -hmm. were the one to break the ice. They were the one to come out with a storm and play with confidence. When you talk about Malaysia Paul Wiley and Tessa Johnson, Malaysia has nine points, or Tessa has nine points. Malaysia has seven points. Malaysia's making the right decisions. What impressed me was in the beginning of the game, she starts to get into the paint and she's getting tied up. So then what happens? She gets to the paint, she makes an adjustment, starts kicking out and finding her teammates. The composure that those two freshmen are playing with on this stage when Iowa started out hot is ridiculous. The tempo picked up when, when, my, got when Full Wiley came into yeah. the game. I don't know why South Carolina was walking the ball down the floor. Full Wiley and Johnson went in, and the tempo took up, uh, went up to another level. And they just look comfortable. Like yeah. Tessa's little one dribble pull up, bloop, bottom of the net. She runs back on the side. Like they look <laughs> unbothered but, out there. But since we're talking about the youth, can we have a moment for Hannah Stolke? Yes. yes. Because she's a sophomore, but last year as a freshman played in the Natty and only played three minutes. She's coming off of her best ever tournament game, 23 points, and today she's doing the work of two women in the paint going up against South Carolina. You know I say it's post player university. Of course. She's got some bounce. Like watching she does. her She's get up off the ground. She, she did get a block against Cardoso. And she yeah. looked surprised. Yeah. She, she, looked surprised. Got, she did. She had a little smirk like, oh, I surprised I just, myself I just, a little bit. Um, but we heard her coach say that she really, she got so much energy and confidence from what she was able to do on Friday. You've been in this locker room in a national championship game with Don Staley as your coach. What's she telling this team right now? I think probably just push pace. Defensively, you figured it out. You 
you have to stop fouling. They picked up some fouls in the first quarter um, on shooting fouls, but you never want to put a shooter yeah. to the line. Yep. And I honestly just continue to play your game. You felt it now. The first half is complete. There's 20 more minutes of this game and just play your game. Pay at your pace. What, what well, would you gonna, be saying? Well, I was going to say on Iowa's side, one thing that's sort of benefiting them or one thing I think they're doing well, they're giving up a lot of offensive rebounds, but they're not fouling a lot on those offensive rebounds. So they're doing a nice job. South Carolina has only taken five free throws. So give Iowa some credit defensively. We talked about it. The O boards are tough, but at least they're not sending South Carolina to the free throw line. I was down at the half against Duke. And I told the team, look, we got it taken away from us last year. This year, we're going to do that to them. That's the mentality mm. Iowa has to go out on okay, the floor coach. with. Okay, coach. Here's, okay, <laughs> coach. Coach, coach. him up, coach. Here's all I'll say. My mentality is, what a first half of basketball. Oh, yeah, a beautiful right right showcase right and game. display. Caitlin Clark makes a little history. You said it, CP. She just wanted to get it out of the way. Another three. As we've got a lead for South Carolina and one half to go before we crown a national champion. And we'll close things out on the other halftime report. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Getting ready to start the third quarter. Undefeated South Carolina, a 49 46 lead on Iowa. As we welcome you back, courtside Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. Not a bad first half for everybody to enjoy. I mean, just incredible. Rebecca for Iowa, the way Caitlin Clark came out of the gates, and then for South Carolina, the way they can shoot from three this season. Caitlin Clark looked like a woman on a mission to start this basketball game. Had 18 of her 21 first half points in that first quarter, stepping into the three point shot, insisting her way to the basket. Ryan Rucco, and when she got the deep ones, able to drain. But this is a very different South Carolina team this season. One who can Hit three-point shots. Mylasia Fulwiley draws defenders. Tahina Pow Pow, the transfer. Three of three from deep in that first half. And then the freshman also getting in on it. Five of 11 from three with South Carolina. Let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. South Carolina, 12 offensive rebounds, a plus eight in second chance points, and a plus 22 in bench points. Iowa did lead for most of the half, but the Gamecocks have been a dominant team in second half this season by far and away the best point differential in second halves in the nation at plus 510 as we send things over to holly Rowe. checking with iowa coach lisa blue to rebounding was the story of the first half she said we can't grow we've just got to have better positioning they did incite one over the back call she talked to them about having their back stronger, straight up and down, get those fouls called a little bit more if you're in the right position. And just before they took the floor, she really tried to encourage her team and said, let's go hard, 20 more minutes, big smiles from everybody. Just gotta find a way to get on that glass. And what a huge steal from Raven Johnson at the end of that second quarter to give South Carolina the three-point lead. She's talked about how this game is personal for her. Can't hit the jumper there, and the rebound ends up with Iowa. I like giving Raven the first look, though, wondering if that layup at the end of the first half might get her out of a little bit of a shooting funk. Clark looking to shake free. She does. Short on a three, and Kitt's able to secure the rebound for South Carolina. An instance where Kitt's arm length was just enough to get the board for her team. And Hall was on Clark to begin the third with those two fouls as Kitts maneuvers inside. A five-point edge for the Gamecocks. So interesting because Chloe Kitts had a quiet game against NC State in the semifinal, but playing really well here in this championship matchup. Marshall did not attempt a shot in that first half. Played all 20 minutes. She, too, playing her final collegiate game. Martin's mid-range won't go. Rebound, South Carolina. The Gamecocks trying to become the first undefeated national champion since UConn in 2016. Kids, nice start to the second half for South Carolina. Here's a falter left alone, in and out on a three. This could be a danger zone right here for Iowa and an opportunity for South Carolina to blow this open. We have seen that as recently as the semifinals. They were up one at the half to NC State. They were up a million by the end of the third. Here's Pow Pow, mid-range jumper. Rolls in. How about the start for South Carolina? 
And Lisa Bluter wanted a timeout instead, Martin. And now Lisa Bluter gets her timeout as Cabby Marshall's three will not count. Bluter does not want this momentum to balloon any further for South Carolina. A 6-0 start to the third. The sophomore Chloe Kitts here in the third quarter getting to the rim, then getting the mid-range jumper to fall as well. Her bench crew feeling the splurge. Well, South Carolina has been in the Final Four now for four straight years. Lost in the semifinals, heartbreaking loss at the buzzer to Stanford. And then how, how do they respond? Well, the next year they come back, they win the championship. Last year, undefeated into the semis, a heartbreaking loss to Caitlin Clark in Iowa. How do they respond this season right now, leading by nine in the third quarter of the national championship game as we send things over to Holly Rowe? Well, how does Iowa respond to this South Carolina run right now? In their last timeout, Caitlin Clark clapping her hands. Big smile. We're good. We're good. Lisa Bluter reiterating the importance of putting a body on someone, particularly number 21, Chloe Kitts. She's got seven boards. Martin slings it inside. Good movement here. A falter. Can't hit the three. Second clean look from a falter from three. Thank you, Ali. That she has not knocked down to begin this third. South Carolina, an 11-0 run, dating back to the final 53 seconds of the second quarter. And that's thrown out of bounds by Pow Pow, who has talked about the difficulty of feeding the post, learning the nuances of 6'7", Camilla Cardoso, and has relied on Raven Johnson a lot for that, who played with Camilla in AAU ball. Just the fifth South Carolina turnover. Here's Clark. Clark pops in, bodies inside, and finishes. Tough finish for Clark, who is looking for an and one. She has 23 points. They dump it down. Cardoso gets whacked by Stolke. And free throws here for Camilla Cardoso. Hey, the 2024 Men's Frozen Four begins Thursday at 5 and 8.30 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Back-to-back -back possessions that illustrated your point perfectly. Pow Pow throws it out of bounds, trying to get it into Cardoso. Johnson perfectly delivered. Holly? Well, you're talking about that great chemistry with Camilla Cardoso and Raven Johnson. Camilla's a fascinating story. Leaving Brazil at just 15 years old, she came to high school in Tennessee. She didn't speak a word of English, and Raven was one of the friends that helped her out. They've played together for eight years. They've had each other's backs in that sacrifice from Camilla Cardoso. Oh, what a dish from Clark, and it'll stay here with Iowa as Stolke couldn't quite haul it in. The way she leads her teammates in full speed with perfectly placed passes. Here's Clark curling, has Cardoso on her. The step back three, no, and kicks the rebound. Cardoso, pretty good contest there for being dragged out on the perimeter and hanging with Clark. Here is Kitts. Has hit some big jumpers in this quarter and gets called for a charge as a falter took the contact. And that will be number two on Chloe Kitts. So two on Stolke, two on O'Grady and a falter for Iowa. And now two on Kitts, Hall, Watkins and Johnson, Tessa Johnson for South Carolina. Yeah, certainly did look like she initiated the contact and the defense was there. Here's Martin behind Stolke. Martin trying to get into the body of Cardoso. And backs it out to the corner Marshall left alone connects on a three her first field goal attempt of the afternoon here's Hall zigging inside the pull up is good strong take from Bree Hall seen a lot of Good looks and successful attempts here in the third quarter in the mid-range for the South Carolina team. Clark trying to muscle it in, could not. Was looking for a whistle, did not come. Clark, 7 of 18 from the floor now. 
less efficient after a blistering start to this game. At 18, a Final Four record in the first. Johnson wide open, in and out. Here comes Clark. Clark finds the cutter, what a look! The video game vision of Caitlin Clark. Anna Stolke up to 11 after she had 23 in the semifinals and Cardoso throws it off the rim. Hell ball here, possession arrow belongs to Iowa. Iowa, nice response here after the strong start in this third from South Carolina. And it has been the others getting in on the action with an assist from Clark. Gabby Marshall steps in to hit her first three. And then here's that video game vision for you, Ryan Rucco. Stokey with the two. Now time for today's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. What's at stake today for South Carolina? Well, they'd be the 10th undefeated national champion. They'd be just the fifth program with three national titles, and they'd win their second championship in the last three seasons. They have been the premier program in women's college basketball over the last seven, eight years. And Dawn Staley trying to become just the fifth coach to win three titles. In this stretch here, my eyes are on Ashlyn Watkins. She only played three minutes in that first half. You would expect her to have good legs and bounce and determination here. Tessa Johnson in as well. Here is Clark. Clark into the paint, spinning and finishing. Two-point game, nice response from Iowa. Clark has 25. A 9-2 Hawkeye run. Here's Johnson, the freshman. Nice feed, Hall in the corner, unable to hit. Watkins the board, there she is, Rebecca. That is what she does. What a dime. Clark and Stokey misses the layup. Clark put it right in Stokey's lap, but she was unable to finish. But I love coming back down the floor. Caitlin Clark clapped her hands, gave Stokey five as a way to say, it's okay, young player. One of the things that Clark's teammates credited her with against UConn was her body language not getting frustrated. How about Tessa Johnson? The freshman again delivering off the bench. The lead right back to seven for South Carolina. Clark on the drive, has it knocked away by Johnson. Gets it back. Marshall left alone, can't hit. Rebound, Watkins went towering over to get a hand on the rebound. She certainly helped secure that offensive board for her team. Big swing, the Stokey miss layup to the Tessa Johnson three. And now Marshall comes up with a steal. Watkins threw it right to her. Here's Martin. Off to Clark. Deep three. Won't go. Tessa Johnson the rebound. Clark now four of nine from deep in this game. But she recognized that she had Watkins on her and wanted to get that look going left. Iowa in a zone. Raven Johnson looking in. Off to Tessa Johnson. Hall lets it fly. You bet. Bree Hall gives South Carolina a 10 point lead. Here's a falter diving in and a held ball. South Carolina has the possession arrow. Bree Hall stepping into this three. This is the biggest difference between South Carolina a year ago and this year, as you see Darius Rucker celebrating. This year's South Carolina team has multiple consistent, efficient weapons from the perimeter. And an 8-0 run from the Gamecocks after Iowa had cut it to two. They are seven for 15 from three. Last year in the semifinal, to your point, Rebecca, they were just four for 20. 
And you're shooting out of the zone, the defense out of the zone. Iowa back to a man-to-man. -man. Raven Johnson can't finish. Rebound hits full Wiley's foot, and it's out of bounds to Iowa. Hey, coming in May on ABC and ESPN Plus is the premiere of Full Court Press, a new original series that follows Caitlin Clark, Camila Cardoso, and UCLA's Kiki Rice during this record-breaking basketball season. Can't wait for that. Well, we've seen some of what the cameras have caught, and it's very good. They have been everywhere throughout this season. Martin gets denied by Watkins. Martin follows it up and gets fouled by Watkins. That will be number three on Ashlyn Watkins. You see Iowa looking more to get inside the paint when Camilla Cardoso isn't on the floor, but Watkins may not be 6'7", but she can certainly elevate and block shots. Now Cardoso will come and get Watkins after picking up that third. Kate Martin at the line. Iowa's first free throws of the quarter. They were 10 of 11 in the first half. And Martin sinks the first. This is the first time we've ever had the most efficient offensive team playing the most efficient defensive team in a national championship. Iowa, number one in offensive rating. South Carolina, number one in defensive rating. Martin ends the 8-0 run. Cardoso back to work. Can't finish. Controlled by a falter. Here's Martin into the lane. Fading away. Can't drop it in. And the rebound for Wiley. For Wiley flips it ahead. Johnson. Another. Tessa Johnson. A freshman in status only. Timeout, Iowa. South Carolina shooting 50% from three. Dangerous in transition. And how about the confidence that you've mentioned of this freshman? Love it. Point to the one who passed it to you. A point to Holly Rowe right now, then. Well, Tessa Johnson, I was talking to her dad, Jamel, and her mom, Danielle, yesterday. They were telling me that she has two older sisters that were both basketball players. One played at Iowa State. And one time, in, one of them was in fourth grade, and they were short of players. So they called down and got Tessa to come and play. She was just in second grade, two years older. And at that age, two years is a big difference. And they said she was the best player. She wasn't scared. She just came in. She was confident. She has this exuberant, ebullient personality. And it's just carrying over right now. She is super confident tonight. Well, she does, Holly. She lights up the room. We've sensed that right away, meeting with her and the South Carolina players who are so connected as a team. They are also incredibly loose, have not felt the weight of their undefeated season at all. There's a falter, bouncing in a crowd, right back to her. She lays it in. That's a good passing in tight spaces from Iowa. Well, part of it is keep away from Camilla Cardoso. <laughs> She's on you. She's on me. I'm not shooting. I'm passing to you. A 17-second difference. Game and shot clock. Nine-point South Carolina lead. Fagan loses the handle. Got it back. And a travel, no, a three-second violation. And now Iowa can hold for a final shot at the end of this third. When you're in the post, if you catch it and immediately start your move to the basket, you get a fresh three seconds. She did not there. As a result, three seconds call. I love how all over the rules you are. You know that rule book inside out. Outside in. <laughs> So at the end of the second, Iowa was down one, holding for a final shot. And Raven Johnson picked the pocket of Clark and laid it in to end the half. How does the third end? Clark around a screen. Clark, step back three, is short. Rebound, bounces out of bounds, and it will stay with Iowa, but just point two on the shot clock. Would have to be a tip. You cannot catch and shoot with two-tenths of a second. Clark lobs it up. O'Grady, no, and that will do it for the third. South Carolina leading by nine. Closing in on a 
championship. Holly Rowe chats with Dawn Staley when we come back. Coach Staley, when you've needed a lift, you've gone to freshmen off the bench. How do you describe the composure and they're taking this moment and seizing it? I mean, it's, it's all the impact of what their their teammates have given them. They pour energy into them all season long, knowing knowing that they're pretty talented, knowing that there's a possibility that that, that they'll share time with them. So it's, it's, this team is pretty special in that. They want what's best for each individual on the team, and that's that's rare. Ten minutes to cap off a perfect season. What will be the most important focus down the stretch? I mean, the most important thing is to continue to be disciplined defensively, continue to contest contest shots. I, I think we're doing a great job at executing our defensive schemes um, on them. Are they going? Are we going to be perfect at it? No, it's a really good Iowa team. But if we can decrease the amount of on the shots that they get that are uncontested increases our chances of winning. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Holly. All right, let's remind you to stay tuned for the championship net cutting ceremony brought to you by Werner Ladder. That's coming up after the game on ESPN. Heard Don Saley talking about her freshman. Malaysia Full Wiley has four assists in the game, delivers it on the money to the other freshman, Tessa Johnson, who has been so efficient. Six of nine, three of five from three. Keys for Iowa to get back in down nine to start the fourth. They have to find ways to get some open looks and capitalize on every single one of them. Clark was 0 for 4 from three in that third. Here is Clark. 25 points tonight, 18 of them in the first quarter. Clark bounces, Stolke in a crowd gets fouled. And Hannah Stolke will go to the line to begin this fourth. Iowa was so good and efficient scoring the basketball in that first quarter when they were able to get stops and get out in transition and really run and be in their flow and have Caitlin Clark feeling it. South Carolina's defense has been really good since then. Certainly helped that they've been able to shoot a higher percentage, come back, set their D, try to deny Clark. Stolke has shot it much better from the line of late, but misses both there. And Cardoso just able to stay in bounds. Key missed free throws from Stolke, who had been at about 72% over her last eight games, but just 46% in her career. A falter falls, Johnson capitalizes. I am so impressed with Tessa Johnson. And we've seen it throughout this tournament, Rebecca, how many times she has hit big shots. Maybe not this depth of production from her throughout the tournament, but she's had key timely baskets throughout. Clark wanted a whistle, did not get it, does get the roll. Clark up to 27. Here's Full Wiley, barges in and finishes. Mylasia Full Wiley. And Tessa Johnson, the keys for South Carolina. And a foul is going to be on Raven Johnson, and that will be her second. Here are today's star stories, brought to you by Honda. Caitlin Clark got off to a torrid start at 18 points in the first quarter. Iowa had built an 11-point lead early, and South Carolina went to its bench, and Dawn Staley pushed the right buttons with Tessa Johnson and Mylasia Full Wiley. Here's Stolke. Stolke turns the corner. Kick ball, and we'll keep it here. 8.30 to go in this fourth quarter, and South Carolina an 11-point lead. Is Dawn Staley a button pusher or a string puller? She we does both. She, <laughs> the puppet master and run in the control room. Martin turns, can't hit. And you can see a little shrug of the shoulders afterwards from Caitlin Clark. For Wiley dumps it in. Kids can't finish. Cardoso feels inevitable on the interior. It's a 13-point South Carolina lead. Nice look. Martin gets fouled. And Kate Martin will go to the line to shoot two. The overwhelming size inside by South Carolina, in particular, Camilla Cardoso. Kitts misses, Cardoso right there, reaches up. What are you going to do with that? She's been playing with a different ferocity as well in the last couple of weeks in terms of her 
demanding the basketball offensively and getting to the glass as well. Holly? Well, Don Staley isn't just a button pusher or string puller. It's not all sunshine and roses. There was a hard point in this season when she had to teach the freshman accountability, in particular, Mylesia Full Wiley. She didn't play in a game, and it was a hard conversation with her, with her mom. And Don said, I have to teach them in these moments. Since then, Mylesia has been one of the best defensive players on the team. She said, I never want to feel that way again. Don Staley holding her accountable has made her better for this moment. And you talk about that conversation with the family, Holly, as Kitts on the offensive glass puts it home. Dawn Staley, we asked of everything you've accomplished as a player, as a coach, you see this moment in women's basketball. What means most to you when you think about your own contributions as a falter gets fouled from behind by Full Wiley? And Dawn said the relationship she has, not just with the players, but with the significant people in their lives. So that is truly the thing she's most proud of with all that she's accomplished in this game. In the game that Don, that Holly referring to, the North Carolina game earlier in the year where Full Wiley only played three minutes, Don didn't like the way she was defending. And what was remarkable to, remarkable to me about that game, it was close. She put a player, and it could have cost them a game having her on the bench, but the lessons are that important to teach young players. Now, if you're Iowa, you've come back from deficits before. Trailed by 12 to UConn, came back and won. Trailed by double digits. The Big Ten Championship game against Nebraska, came back and won. They trailed by 12 here, 7.20 to go in the fourth. Johnson can't bank it in. There's a stop from Iowa. Clark zips it ahead for Wiley. They're able to knock it out of bounds. The difference between this game and those previous games you mentioned, as you see this, like against most guard defenders, that's getting through. Miley's a full wow. Wiley. She can dunk a basketball, able to get up there and deflect, but those other teams, Ryan, didn't have the offensive rebounding ability that this South Carolina team has. Clark didn't get much space there with Hall on her. Clark, the crossover and the hit from three. A big one for Iowa, and they build off it. 30 for Clark. For Wiley gets denied. Martin has it. Clark wants it. Clark races to Martin to grab it. She'll fire in and out. Kept alive to Marshall. Her three is good. Game back on. An 8-0 Iowa run. Mid-range, no. Rebound, a falter. A falter gets it poked from behind and taken by Hall. And not a wise play there from Sydney, a falter. But exceptional energy by Ashlyn Watkins as well. Chasing down. Watkins, Hall, and Paul Wiley were all after. And Clark is called for the foul, or will it be Martin? They both were there, and Tessa Johnson will go to the line. This foul is not called on Caitlin Clark on the block, but it's Kate Martin right there. Yes, that's the right call. Clark is upset because she knows her contact was clean, but Martin hit the arm of Johnson. This is the second foul on Kate Martin as Tessa Johnson hits the free throw. South Carolina three for eight from the line now today. Just a huge stop in transition a moment ago as Iowa was starting to build some momentum. Cardoso back in. How about the bench points? 36-0 advantage for South Carolina. It's one of the great assets all season long of this South Carolina team. Clark wheeling, taking, short. And South Carolina has been able to steady things after that 8-0 Iowa run. Johnson. Trying to get it inside, Watkins surrounded. Still plenty of time to operate for South Carolina. Cardoso finds Johnson, her three, in and out. 
Cardoso the rebound and a held ball. No, a travel. A travel from Cardoso and South Carolina turns it over. Don Staley not so sure. Iowa, though, needs to play nearly flawless defense, not only initially, but getting on the glass. Here's Clark. Martin into the lane. Martin off of South Carolina. And it stays with Iowa. Let's see. Oh, I, I'm not sure there's a travel there. Jump ball. That's yeah, I think it's ball. a held ball. Which the possession arrow belongs with South Carolina, so would have been their basketball. Clark finds the cutter. Martin lays it in. Six-point game. Coming on five minutes to go for the national championship. 16 for Kate Martin. Final college game for her, Gabby Marshall, Caitlin Clark, and then Camilla Cardoso for South Carolina. Shot clock fading. Johnson's jumper off the mark. Watkins, and a foul is called on Martin. It will be her third. 4.39 to go in the fourth quarter. All the action you could hope for. A two-possession game. South Carolina on the brink of perfection. Iowa seeking the comeback in its first national championship. Let's check out our most reliable team brought to you by Xfinity. Well, South Carolina has certainly been the most reliable team in the country in recent years. Last year, we're undefeated until falling to Iowa in the semifinals. They have five players selected to the WNBA draft, including our colleague, Aaliyah Boston, you will hear on the post game. Then this year, what do they do? Well, they just go 37-0 in the national championship game, trying to become the first undefeated champions since 2016. And after all the players they lost, not many people picked them to be back in this moment. And we asked Dawn Staley and her players, was there a moment during the season when you realized, oh, we're going to be really good? And all of them said that opening game in Paris is when they understood, oh, no, we could be special again. I think that's when the rest of the basketball world <laughs> yeah. realized it as well. Six-point game here, 439 to go in the fourth. Iowa has made a push after trailing by 14. Ball, mid-range, yes. A big one for Bree Hall, the vocal leader of this South Carolina squad. Clark has 30. Clark will drive it. Squeezes it off of a leg. Marshall able to save it. And Iowa still has possession. A falter gets pushed, banks it in, plus the foul. Gabby Marshall with only six points in this game, but that hustle play was huge to get that basketball before it crossed the line or touched the line. Saves it to a falter, and he just takes it confidently to the rim. Third foul on Hall as a falter completes the three-point play. It's a five-point game. 4-10 to go in the championship. Pow Pow creeping back. It was three for three from three in the first half. Johnson, catch, fire, no, rebound, Clark. Clark lost the handle, gets it back from Martin. Clark into the corner. Marshall resets with Martin. Ten to shoot. Martin into the paint, and she traveled. Huge turnover there from Iowa. Eighty to seventy-five, South Carolina in front. Three twenty to go in the fourth. Johnson, given space, not taking this time. She struggled with her shot today. One of ten. Pow, pow, five to shoot. Pow, pow, looking for an angle. Gets fouled with two point two on the shot clock. 
Tahina Pow Pow creating an opportunity. Interesting to note that Addison O'Grady has gotten considerable minutes here in this fourth quarter. A little bit more size and strength against Cardoso. Clearly a foul on a falter who grabs the wrist. Nice step through by Tahina Pow Pow. Rebecca, you talked about it. Tahina Pow Pow chatted with us in Paris, said last year watching the semifinal game against Iowa, looked at South Carolina's inability to shoot from deep and said they could use me. Transferred here, it's been a perfect fit. It was before she had made the decision to transfer to South Carolina, and she said, I was thinking, that could be me out there making shots. Iowa in the bonus. South Carolina leading by six. Iowa still with one foul to give. Clark has it knocked away. Martin on the drive. O'Grady gets denied. Cardoso gobbles it up. Outstanding defense by Raven Johnson on Caitlin Clark fighting over that screen. Cardoso, 13 points, 13 rebounds, and three blocks. 2.40 to go. Six point South Carolina lead. Here's Johnson. Johnson, the pull up. No rebound. Snare. Cardoso. Unstoppable. Clark launches. Won't go. Long rebound, Johnson. And was that the last gasp from Iowa? Don Staley telling Johnson, settle in, understanding time and score and the advantage she has. Johnson gets fouled by Clark. Iowa had one to give. The separator, Camilla Cardoso, because of what she does on both ends. Huge block here, fighting, getting position, corralling, finishing off balance. What a day she has had. Don Staley has talked to us about how determined Cardoso has been during this tournament. Felt like her announcing her decision to go pro help free her up a little bit, make her enjoy this run even more. 15 points, 15 boards. Three blocks as well. Pow Pow's three off the mark. Rebound hits the floor and it's going to stay here as Iowa gets called for the foul. And South Carolina is going to go to the line. The Iowa fans perplexed at that whistle. Kate Martin here boxing out. Uh, it's the right hand hold. It's the right hand hold. Right, watch her right hand, puts it. You're good there until you have the hold on the right side. And it wasn't necessary, I don't oh. think, either from Martin. I believe it should be Watkins shooting these free throws. And the officials are going to talk about it. That is foul number four on Martin, and it is Watkins who will go to the line. 47% as a freshman, 55.5% this year. And this is the first. There is still plenty of time for Iowa. Down eight, 147 to go. We talked about it a lot in the Iowa UConn game at the end. Boxing out on the free throw is important. Especially when Cardoso is involved. Watkins hits the second. Nine points, South Carolina lead. Clark on the drive. Clark the flip, forced it up. Rebound Johnson. A couple of forces in a row from Clark. And both of them fruitless. The South Carolina faithful can start to sense it. Iowa has to foul. That's what Lisa Bluter wants, or at least pressure. And now Caitlin Clark will foul Raven Johnson. You know, Caitlin Clark was asked yesterday, Rebecca, about her legacy. But she had such a wonderful answer. To asked about whether or not this game factors into it. And she said, I don't want my legacy to be, I won this amount of games or scored this amount of points. I hope it's what I was able to do for the game of women's basketball. I hope it's the young boys and girls that were inspired to play this sport or dream to do whatever they want to do in their lives. For me, I don't need to validate myself within 40 minutes. I don't think that's a fair assessment. South Carolina to stop. Iowa will have to foul again. They do, and Pow Pow goes to the line. 
but they've allowed South Carolina to burn about 15 seconds the last two possessions by not fouling quicker. You see the records broken this season for Caitlin Clark. Career points, single season points, career threes, single season threes. As South Carolina closes in on a championship. They talked about this being a get back game. After Iowa beating them last year. Clark on the drive, elevates, can't finish. Cardoso the rebound. Johnson plows ahead. A fault are able to come up with a steal, and Iowa will take a timeout with 53 and a half seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And Dawn Staley's team right at the doorstep of an unblemished season. South Carolina team that's done in this championship game what they have done all season long, their identity, shooting the ball efficiently, being getting stops consistently on the defensive end, and then their bench and how they can wear you down and uplift themselves. A 37 to nothing advantage off the bench for South Carolina. And as you've seen from this game, they were second in the country in bench scoring, and that's not just because they were blowing teams out and their bench was getting a lot of minutes. They have used all nine players of their rotation in any spot at any time. Martin chucks it in. Stolke catches. Clark has it taken away by Johnson. And now will Iowa back off? And it looks like they will. Don Staley telling Raven Johnson, do not shoot. What a crescendo here this afternoon for women's basketball. As Molly Davis, who has been injured and unable to play, comes to the scorer's table so she can touch the floor one last time. And Caitlin Clark says goodbye to college basketball. No one has done more to grow the popularity in a broad way of this game, in the history of the game, than Caitlin Clark. Camilla Cardoso checks out for South Carolina, a career high 17 rebounds for her. Clark finishes with 30 points. Six seconds to go. Perfection with a touch of sweet redemption. Undefeated South Carolina has won its third national championship. the final as South Carolina becomes just the fifth program to win three national championships. You see the tears in the eyes of Dawn Staley as Caitlin Clark gets a handshake from the South Carolina coaching staff. The all-time leading scorer in Division I history.
And today is the final time we see Caitlin Clark in a number 22 Iowa jersey. Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. As we send things over to Holly Rowe. Coach, you're one of the toughest to ever come out of Philly. We don't see these tears from you often. Why tonight? and they weren't going to be denied. So I am, I'm, I'm so incredibly happy for our players. It doesn't always end like you want it to end, much like last year. But, but my freshies are, are at, the top of my, at the top of my heart because they wanted this. And I, I hope we can erase whatever pain they had last year experiencing not being able to finish it here. So I'm just super proud of where I work. I'm super proud of our fans. I, I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's unbelievable. You, you've given this group a lot of leeway this year. You call them the daycare. You've, you've had to coach a different way. and have a trust, and their parents have that same trust, this is what can happen. They made history. They etched their names in the history books when this is the unlikeliest group to do it. And sometimes, I mean, God is funny like that. He's funny. He rips your, rips your heart out, and he makes you believe. He makes you believe the unimaginable. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, Dawn Staley, a champion once again, and Caitlin Clark's collegiate career, which has captured the consciousness of this country and dazzled sports fans over the last two seasons, ends today in Cleveland. Back-to-back -back trips to the national championship game for Caitlin Clark, Lisa Bluter in Iowa. But once again, they fall just short. Well, this year, certainly South Carolina could get it done from the perimeter. Let's send things over to Holly Rowe. Well, Tahina, you came to South Carolina because you wanted to be around people who wanted to be great. But you were great tonight. These were crucial threes. How did you bring them to the promised land? Man, it's a team effort, man. We, we've, we've come a long way. There's a long journey. You know, I have this little freshman beside me, has a game of her life today, and I'm just so proud of our team. And it feels great. It hasn't sunk in yet, man. I think about your family in this moment. Your dad had you working out extra when you're like eight years old. Your your brothers move wherever you go. How do you describe that? what your family's poured into you tonight? They're so important to me, man. I'm just so happy and blessed to, you know, have them here with me. and. Man, I bet my dad's crying right now. He's probably gonna be mad that I said that, but he's probably emotional right now. I miss you, dad and mom. Love y'all. Tessa, you are a freshman. You come into the national championship game and you just are unbothered by the stage. What was your mindset like on your first couple of threes? Well, I wanted to win. Our team, we want to win. And my teammates are just encouraging, always having my back, telling me, play how you 
play. So I just did that. I think there's a lot of people that might get nervous, that might think they're letting their team down, or how do I perform on this stage? Why didn't you feel like that tonight? It didn't show. I don't feel pressure because the team that I have and the coaches that I have, they're like, no matter if I make a mistake, they're always going to encourage me and they're never going to let me give up on myself. Your teammates, they could be mad that you're getting all this playing time in the huddle tonight. How is it that you are all so unselfish that no matter whose night it is, that's okay? The culture that Coach Staley built, the atmosphere, the environment that we're in, it's all, we're unselfish people and that's that's how we win it. I know your mom and dad are here, your, your two sisters that play basketball, your brother Jeremiah. What do you say to your family, Tessa? I love you all and I couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, South Carolina celebrates just the 10th undefeated champion in the history of women's college basketball. Tears of joy from Dawn Staley. A third championship for her Gamecocks. Nobody expected it with this group after losing all five starters, but they delivered time and time again, including today, going up against the best player in the nation. While South Carolina celebrates, Caitlin Clark says goodbye.